the Macmillan A6, or the KRG Bravo, this week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is brought to you by Modular Driven Technologies. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out mdttac.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to the Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday our question comes from Roger, and he asks, what are the odds we could get a detailed comparison between the Macmillan A5 slash A6 and the KRG Bravo? Well, I do not have a Macmillan A5 on deck or here in the shop. Um, we do have a A3-5, but that is a, a little bit different animal. Um, but I have the Macmillan A6 here, and we have done a pretty good overview slash review of this when it was first released. We actually got this specific stock uh, before they were publicly available, and uh, really wanted to thank Macmillan for sending that out to us. Uh, it's a ton of fun. This is a really nice evolution of the A-Series. Uh, now, it's got some things that I like, and it's got some things I dislike about it, um, but it is a... Uh, personal preference over a lot of it. Uh, the stock functions absolutely perfectly, just like you would expect a high-end fiberglass stock to do. We also have the KRG Bravo here. Now, uh, the Bravo, again, we reviewed it when it first came out. And the interesting thing about this question is these two are on very opposite ends of the spectrum as far as price is concerned. Uh, the KRG Bravo is down around the $350 mark. Um, as I knock stuff over here, uh, the Macmillan A6, um, this guy is up around $1,000 the way we have it configured here, not including the bottom metal that I have on the uh, stock. So let's talk about some things that uh, make them different and why you might choose one over the other. Um, first of all, the modularity really is a big thing that plays in when guys talk about fiberglass stocks or chassis systems. Um, chassis systems generally have the ability to configure them for the mission. So whatever you have going on, if you have a uh, night shoot where you're going to run night vision, it's easy to clamp a night vision bridge on them, put that on. Uh, if you need specific accessories mounted underneath your forend, uh, specific interfaces for tripods or bipods or bags or anything like that, uh, with the chassis system, it's easy to bolt those on. Not so much uh, with a lot of traditional stocks. Now you can get over that now with uh, the Arca rail interfaces that are coming out where you can bolt the Arca rail on the bottom here of either one of these and then you can put whatever you want on the bottom of the rifle. But things like uh, night vision, it is much more difficult and labor intensive to add a night vision bridge to a fiberglass stock than it is to a chassis. Uh, you're going to have to use something like one of the Badger night vision bridges, and you're actually going to have to inlet it into the stock. Uh, that's going to take some time. It's not something that you would do the day before uh, you would go out um, in the field. So it, it takes a little bit of prior planning. And once you set things up like that, so say you do go ahead and have a night vision bridge uh, inlet in here and installed, uh, you're not just going to decide next week that, well, I don't really use that all that much. I don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and ditch it. Uh, you can take the top of the bridge off, but the lower half of it is still going to be in that uh, stock and it's going to be there forever more. Um, things like sling mounting. You really have to decide ahead of time where you're going to have your sling mounted and have that set up. And once you have it set up, you know, you can add, but removing is generally a pain in the butt because you have to take that stuff out and then you have to fill it with epoxy and uh, it's usually not worth it. So here, when I ordered this, I went ahead and had uh, flush cups placed on both sides so I can run the sling whichever way I want. I can run, um, if I want to put the sling on the bolt side, uh, for whatever reason, I can do that. Usually I have the sling on the left side of the rifle for a right-handed configured rifle. 
uh, but you can set it up however you want to set it up. Um, additionally, I went ahead and had a Picatinny accessory rail with a QD uh, cup in it installed at the factory on this. Uh, this was before the Arca really, really took hold and launched, uh, so I went with a Picatinny rail. Now, putting an Arca rail on here is going to take a little bit more effort because I'll have to take the Picatinny rail off. The screw holes for the Picatinny rail may or may not line up with the Arca rail, depending upon which rail I use. And I will probably have to come back here and drill and put threaded inserts in here for the rail support in the back area. Uh, so again, these are things we have to plan for. We don't just do it on the fly. Now, when we talk about the Bravo, even though this is a much less expensive option, uh, I can configure this thing on the fly. I could actually go to the range with a pile of parts in a box and in a few minutes, uh, configure whatever sling mounting points I wanted, whatever night vision bridges, uh, whatever uh, tripod or bipod interfaces I want on the bottom of it. It's very easy to configure it however you want. Uh, in addition, uh, KRG has made the Bravo compatible with a huge wide range of accessories for their Whiskey 3 chassis systems. Uh, so even if you wanted to do a full enclosed forend, uh, you can take a couple of screws off here, drop the polymer forend off of it, and put on their forend. So you really do have a ton of adjustments and a ton of options there. But again, it's what you want, and it just requires a little bit of extra planning. More than likely, if you are looking at ordering one of these, because the amount of time it takes to order it and get it produced and get it in, you're going to know exactly what you want, exactly what the purpose of the rifle is going to be, and how you're going to want it built up uh, before you drop the coin on this. Uh, the Bravo is really more of a budget option, and it's for something that guys want to uh, either keep the price point of the rifle low or they want to be able to do that reconfiguring on the fly. So it is a very, very good option for that. Now, a lot of this really comes down to personal preference, um, what you like one way or the other. Now, one of the big starting points on it is if you prefer the feel of a fiberglass stock. So fiberglass stocks, when you fire the rifle, just have a different feel to them. Uh, it feels more dead. It doesn't resonate as much. Some chassis systems really have a, a lot of harmonics going on when you fire them. Uh, chassis producers try to minimize that, and they can minimize it pretty well, uh, but it's still a different feel between the two. Uh, sometimes chassis systems will feel a little bit more sharp when you fire uh, because there is less flex in that system. Um, the McMillans don't really have a lot of flex in it, but it seems like the uh, fiberglass absorbs a little bit more of that shock uh, when you fire, so you don't get that harmonic going through into your cheekbone that is on the uh, fiberglass stock here. Uh, so it, that plays into it partially. Uh, the balance of it plays in. Uh, this, again, has heavy fill, so depending upon what barrel you put on here, uh, it will have a different balance. Uh, the KRG, again, you can put weights in this thing, and you can um, level it out pretty much however you want, but just there is an, an overall more rigid feeling uh, to a fiberglass stock like this. Now, the, the Bravo is not flimsy, is not flexible. I don't want anybody to misconstrue that. Uh, it is a different feel, though, because, for instance, the Bravo, I have a polymer forend that is screwed into an aluminum backbone here. So, when you are holding it, when you are maneuvering the rifle around, it feels completely different uh, than the fiberglass forend on the A6 here. Now, pistol grip configuration is another consideration. Uh, the Bravo, the pistol grip, is nice and vertical, but it is actually more vertical than the A6. That's something I like. Uh, the Pistol grip is also a little bit closer to the trigger than it is on the A6, which that can be a pro or a con depending upon the size of your hand. If you have small hands, uh, then losing that reach to the trigger 
may be a good thing for you. If you have large hands, you may feel cramped up on that trigger and uh, you may be uh, causing some other accuracy issues or you may have to float your hand further back uh, to get that nice 90 degree reach to the trigger. Uh, both of them have the ability to float the thumb up next to the tang of the action, which I really prefer. That is how I like to shoot uh, for Quite a few positions, most positions in fact, I prefer to have my thumb up there. And on pistol grip chassis, I prefer ones that have thumb ramps on either side of the pistol grip uh, so that I can get my hand in pretty much the same position. Uh, when we float to the back of the chassis here, on the A6, I do have a adjustable comb. Uh, this is an additional charge over the standard comb, uh, but I think it's a very, very worthwhile one. Uh, you can also, of course, get the saddle uh, cheek piece that is a little bit less expensive, but I much prefer the thumb screw adjustment. And it's down low enough, it really doesn't get in the way if you have to shoot support side. Uh, the comb is also adjustable left or right. Uh, so you can really get your eyeball exactly where you want it behind the scope. Again, that is an additional cost. Um, the adjustable comb comes with the Bravo. Uh, that is a standard feature in it. Uh, so you do have your height adjustment. You do not have a left to right adjustment on it, though. Uh, you would have to buy an additional cheek piece uh, to be able to do that. Uh, both of these are spacer adjustable buttstocks. You can get quite a few different buttstock options on the A6, uh, but the spacers are what you get on the Bravo. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, I spec the A6 out with spacers on them because it's a very simple system. It's very easy to get set to where you want. And if you need to swap this out for a different shooter, then it's easy to know how many spacers or what spacers I have in for me. I take it out for another shooter and know how to get it right back for me. That's not as convenient as a toolless adjustment like I have on a lot of other chassis, um, but it is just fine because I really didn't intend this rifle to be one that would swap through a bunch of different shooters. The biggest difference between these guys uh, is the fact that the Bravo comes right out of the box ready to accept AICS magazines. Uh, so you have a magazine system already built into the chassis system. There is no extra cost on this. Uh, for this one, uh, we had it inleted for the uh, Seekins bottom metal. Uh, so this is a Seekins magazine system. So the Extra cost of the magazine system is definitely something you need to factor in. Now, you could do this with a standard box magazine and a hinged floor plate, or you could do it with a blind floor plate and an ADL trigger guard on it. You can order it however you want. But I think most of the guys that are watching this are going to want some type of magazine system. And so that's something you need to factor in. And it's something you need to decide on at the beginning when you order this. Um, because you want to have that inlet done at the factory. You can change it later on if you decide to go to something else, but it's going to have to be recut, and you're either going to have to bed the new bottom metal into it, uh, or you're going to have to uh, do some filling, and it's just a huge pain in the butt. So it's better to get that set up the way it is. Now, one of the other large differences between the two, and this is really the big difference between a chassis system and a stock, is the action bedding area inside the stock. Now, the A6 is a traditional fiberglass stock, um, and we ordered it with aluminum pillars inside of it. So the area that the action actually touches is fiberglass, but the area where the action screws go through have... Uh, tubes of aluminum that run through the stock. So when I put my action screws in and tighten them down, I'm squeezing the action and the bottom metal together against an aluminum pillar that is in here. And that gives you very consistent torque readings when you torque those action screws down. Uh, on a chassis system, usually you are already torquing against an aluminum block or an aluminum backbone in this case. Uh, so where the action sits in here is all aluminum, 
and the action screws go through and then pull the action down into that aluminum. And it is a V-shaped bedding system, so it doesn't totally touch the action on the bottom, but it touches it along the side in a very consistent manner. With traditional fiberglass stocks, most shooters will end up bedding the action. So you will put a fiberglass epoxy in here and sit the action down into it, and the epoxy will take the exact shape of the bottom of the action. So when you torque the action down into the stock, it has the exact contact every time. There are pros and cons to this. The pro to it is it is very consistent. The con is if you get nastiness down into it, uh, it can affect the accuracy of the rifle because there's no place for that grit or that dirt or any of that to go. Now, if the bedding job was done correctly and it is a full bed bedding job, so the entire action is bedded, there's really no place for that dirt to get in there because the action is sitting so tightly down into the stock. Um, but that fiberglass bedding will degrade over time and it will eventually have to be ground out and it will have to be rebedded. Uh, that is not a concern with the chassis systems. Now, with a chassis like the KRG, you could bed it if you wanted to. Uh, I really don't see any great benefit from that. Uh, the flip side of that is with the A6, this A6 has not been bedded uh, when we got it in and dropped the action in and shot it for evaluation. Uh, it shot very, very accurately with just the pillars and just being torqued to spec without any bedding at all. Uh, so you can get very good accuracy from a pillar fiberglass stock uh, without actually bedding the action into it. So just some other differences there. Overall, though, this really comes down to a personal preference thing. And this question was very interesting because of the price difference between these two. So it's going to come down to what you want to do with the rifle and what your personal preferences are. The fiberglass stocks really just have a soft spot in my heart for them. Uh, that's why my A35 is set up with a Remington 700 with a 308 barrel on it uh, with a... Uh, US Optics scope on it, and that is just my fun. I want to go out and shoot some 308 rifle. Uh, so I really haven't decided exactly what we're going to do with the A6. Um, it has been sitting here in the shop for a good while now, and I really need to get a good action into it and uh, get it set up and go out and get some work done with it. Uh, maybe we'll turn it into a, a scope testing mule. So uh, for that, we will see. Uh, but Anybody that is in the budget market, the KRG Bravo is a really, really great option. And because it's modular, because you can replace the four ends with a wide variety of options, uh, there really is room to grow on this chassis system. Uh, either one of these are going to be competitive for National Rifle League or PRS competition. Um, they'll even be competitive for NRL 22. Uh, both have options for 22 actions that will fit in them. Uh, you'll have to go check out the manufacturer's website to see what 22 actions will fit in these. Uh, McMillan, I know, has a wide variety of them. Uh, KRG has been producing the Bravo for a couple of 22 actions. So check that out. And of course, the Remington 700 versions will fit uh, the Voodoo 22s and also some of the other actions that uh, should be coming out very soon. So that is my opinion on the McMillan A6 and the KRG Bravo. But as always, I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Are these stocks kind of in the same uh, niche? Do you think there are a lot of people out there that are trying to decide between the two? Do you prefer a fiberglass stock over a chassis system? If so, why? I just really want to hear what you guys have to say on it. If you have any questions over anything we've covered on this Mail Call Mondays, please drop it in the comment section down below or head over to Facebook or Twitter. If you'd like to support the content that you know and love, we would love to have you over on Patreon at patreon.com. Uh, that's a great way for you to help us continue to produce the content that you guys are watching right now. And until next time, get out and shoot.